Today I will teach us will be how to develop and writing a research protocol. We'll go through the research protocol definition, what are the items that uh, it's mandatory to be available when you uh, need to submit it to any IRB, and uh, who is the team that have to be with you uh, during your research uh, um, um, project. Here is the life cycle of any clinical trial. Um, in a brief, there is a development plan here in the uh, left corner, upper left corner, which is here we are talking about. You have to discuss it with your team, uh, choose your team uh, by, you know, by the, the, the main that you mean that you know what are exactly the role of each one in your team. Then you will have to start writing the protocol and um, I will told you that you have to write a detailed step-by-step -step, uh, um, document. Then a pre-study activity, which means that you have um, uh, to calculate the sample size, for example, uh, know where is the setting that you will run the study, uh, submit it uh, the, to the IRB, preparing for any comments or feedback from the IRB, registration, your protocol, in, for example, in any FDA um, association or FDA society in your country, and so on and so forth. This is what we name pre-study activity. And so for sure, including the training of the team, uh, including uh, preparing um, uh, like a place uh, to save the, the chart and the data, the data for the peop for the patients. Um, now, for example, um, whose will be like the statistical analysis that will help at the end. So all of these steps we called about the pre-study activity. During the clinical trial, uh, once you enroll up the first patient, make sure that there will be like a monitoring visit either from the sponsor or from the institution. Monitor slash an audit visit. Um, so and during also there will be collecting of the data on the case report form CRF. There will be, for example, if needed, um, uh, collection of a blood test or any radiological examination. After that, after you finish the collection, there will be a data analysis and of a end of a study activity, which is like in a follow up, um, uh, for example, any uh, destroy of the medication of the clinical uh, trial medication, um, replying uh, or, or notification of the IRB that this study is closed. Um, one of the uh, activity registration file, scientific publication, and writing a study protocol to the IRB. So this is in brief what are the requirement uh, from the IRB during uh, his journey um, in the clinical trial project. Um, one of the misleading terms that being used worldwide, to be honest, uh, the people did not differentiate between what are the proposal, what is that the protocol. Uh, a proposal is an expanded idea enough to justify funding. It's not only funding, but it's only sometimes when you uh, you need to um, what I can say like explain your idea to to them for example in a tea, in a conference and uh, or in any meeting uh, in order that you need uh, to ask for um, a subsite to to be with you or you know to to enter or to join your study and uh, you ask to have like on a big sample size so this is you have to present your proposal, which is your summary of your full protocol. When you need, like we said, a fund from sponsor or from any entity, you will uh, provide with them the proposal. So it will be an expanded idea. Usually it's like the same content of an, like uh, of abstract without the result and uh, for, ex for sure the conclusion. But you have to mention um, uh, why you choose this study, the rationale of this study, and the main objective. Um, and for sure, what you will add um, in the scientific uh, community. What you will add and what's your, what you are using, which type of medication, how the setting, what is the inclusion and exclusion criteria. Um, it's around like one to two page maximum, it will be. While for the protocol, it's a detailed, step-by-step, -step planned how to conduct a study, test the hypothesis and guide the day-to-day -day care of the patient enrolled in the study. Usually it's the main difficult step is to write a protocol because you have to put all of the scenarios, either the good or the bad that will be, uh, that can be happened 
during the trial with the patient with your study team um, with the medication if it's been out of stock or something like what if there is any side effect how you will uh, reduce the dose um, um, if in case of emergency who will pay this emergency uh, care to the patient you have to put all of the scenario um, like also um, if any of your study team um, for example leave your uh, team who will cover instead so you have to put in mind and you have to talk with this uh, person in advance um, what other uh, can happen yeah where you will store the medication um, is there any enough stock the sponsor will provide it with you um, you have to write uh, like an agreement between the sponsor that they will be responsible for the medication all during the trial and after the trial if the patient got a benefit so you have to think really deeply deeply about what can be happened and what are the scenario that you have to be prepared you have to put for each like you know for each objective like a backup plan what if this happened what, what if the did not happen the protocol have to be uh, uh, for sure established prior to study start include amount of detail for the reader lay or say to understand exactly what is required to conduct the study. Uh, why I said establish a prior to study start because to be honest some of the PIs just write a brief one and then we say just we have because uh, unless we get the IRB approval then we will uh, make any amendment or any uh, edit on the protocol but let's uh, go to the loop and get the IRB approval as soon as possible because I need to, to write or to you know to try the medication this is the main uh, uh, you know um, error that's been happened now so now you have to make it prior to study start because you have to be prepared for any scenario and for any question from the IRB or from the audits later on um, when you write the protocol make sure that you write it in like um, a lay uh, language because um, Make sure that who will review the protocol or who review the uh, 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 any protocol in the IRB committee. One of them, not none, all of them are scientific because you know the IRB committee have to have minimum five and one of them scientific and the other maybe non-scientific. Uh, the main rule of non-scientific because they need to understand or to be from the patient side, uh, from the community, and they need to know uh, how the patient can be accept such you know a criteria uh, in order to be involved in this study so if you write a detailed scientific or using scientific term the IRB will not may will not accept it so you have to make sure it's an easy also make sure even for your study team not all of your study team like are an expert in that field for example I mean um, in endocrine for example tumor none of them may be like and a pharmacist. Pharmacist is not specialized in this uh, field. Uh, the um, la lab technology or the radiation uh, or radiology, for example, tech. If you need to write when you submit the protocol and in order and ask him to be enrolled with you, he will not understand what you did. You write so write it in, a, in a, like in a simple scientific language, you know. And any abbreviation, any um, scientific word, use it just put in uh, brackets what are the definition and what that means uh, in like simply like wikipedia uh, describing any um, uh, any word so the protocol you have to ask yourself what is the scientific question i'm looking for what is the hypothesis what are at the end what i'm i need to approve or not approve what is the intervention expected outcome when the study will start how long will be last who is the study who is the population from where you choose your uh, or uh, you will collect your data uh, the sample size how can we optimize potential benefit while minimizing potential harm as we said this is one of the main ethical consideration uh, uh, when you conduct any trial um, we cannot minimize, we cannot, you know, roll out any harm, but we can minimize it as much as we can. So you have to, the IRB have to, to know exactly what did you do in order to minimize such harm. Um, the main um, 
now we will talk about the main um, you can head line or header that you have sections that you have to follow each in the protocol general information which is like protocol title version date and number name and address of the investigator the sponsor medical expert the sponsor the monitor laboratory and other involved in the study for example the, the radiation uh, and any uh, you know what we can say it, any any person responsible for collection of data who is like we name it as the coordinator so you have to mention on the statistical analysis person so in in brief that's your study team and okay this is what where it's the part of the the proposal it's part of the protocol it's act as a stand and all summary of the study it generally consists of one two sentence background then the concise objective or aim followed by a brief outline description of participant intervention method outcome measure and proposed analysis creation and document use commonly used preparation and acronym and describe it in advance before uh, go uh, in, in sorry in each section whatever you are creating use so describe it in each time so what are the background information will uh, include it's a literature review current information about the disease or problem in both clinical and non-clinical studies it will be a description of knowledge to be gained from the study summary of known and potential risk and benefits description of route dosage regimen and treatment period population to be studies rationale this is where you indicate how the study will substantially add to science change practice save money and for sure save lives or improve the quality of life so the background should not be an exhaustive literature review at the end the reader should have a clear idea of what is the research question and how the research will help fill the gap in the literature usually when you wrote the literature review put in your mind that you will write wrote it in like in a, a funnel uh, shape which you mean you have to be more for, uh, in, the, in the beginning you have to be more wide uh, generalizable and then uh, as long as the funnel become closer to each other you will have to be more specified on the disease on the um, treatment on the you know population and then you have to at the end you have to tell indicate the rationale of in, uh, conduction of s s such type of this trial in this population um, section is the trial objective this is the most important part in the protocol because in this section the one who designed the, the data collection sheet will go back to the literature review the statistician when he made analysis he will go back to this uh, uh, objective uh, section uh, you know the IRB when they need to review they will need to see what are the new you know addition science uh, um, you know information or what you can gain or how you will uh, we can say how we can say it, how how you will maintain the safety of the patient during your objective so they will go back to this part so you have to write it very carefully very clear uh, sometimes you have have a primary objective and secondary objective sometimes you don't have secondary objective but the primary one and you can have more than one uh, objective so for example you have to include the details of your primary objective what is your main purpose of in performing this study and should be focused on one question sample is to evaluate the efficacy of antibiotic in the treatment of acute bronchitis the secondary objective uh, which can be two or three and can be dependent or independent of the primary objective it's not necessary that you have to to rely on the primary objective it sometimes can be uh, another objective just to see if there is any correlation or you know a relation between uh, any variables and so on for example here will be to assess the patient overall change in symptoms and return to daily activity after two weeks of antibiotic treatment which is the quality of life so it's not related to the efficacy uh, objective the outcome it's what are the primary and secondary outcome detail of the outcome measured use how you will you uh, what are the outcome that you will use in order to measure uh, this uh, objective 
the tunnel design methodology, it includes a description of study type, for example, prospective data or a specimen collection, retrospective or observation, survey or questionnaire, whatever type of study. Type of study and design should be decided on the basis of proposed objective and the availability of the resources. Uh, this is one of the main when you design uh, your protocol and write down the statistical uh, analysis and even the how you will collect the data it depends on your objective. The methodology explains the procedure that will be used to achieve the objective. In this section, the definition of the variable used should be specified in detail, uh, detail along with the type of variable and the way to measure them. Example, this is a retrospective chart review of patients treated for, for example, bronchitis with for example other disease what kind of data you will be collecting to measure your primary and secondary outcome so you will say uh, if if we need retrospective so you will go back to the medical chart you have to mention from which date you will uh, t t started uh, for example uh, from 2015 until now uh, you have to choose like um, uh, the setting only if it's one, one hospital or uh, more than one hospital um, you have to tell, for example, uh, if you are measuring the efficacy of antibiotic, you have to see how many admissions so you see the side effect uh, of uh, the, the, the common side effect of the antibiotic, how it's now decreased with the use of a new antibiotic, you know, so you have to measure it uh, uh, very carefully. Here about the study population, which is mean the inclusion exclusion criteria. Uh, which are the like you cannot include any for the patient did not meet the inclusion criteria so they cannot uh, be enrolled so even if there is no exclusion criteria you have to mention there is none uh, unless that to show the IRB that you are aware about there is you are for example it's general and you can accept any patient um, withdrawal criteria this is yeah for to know uh, or to tell your study team uh, if the patient, for example, um, have like a kidney function test, you know, exceed the limit, special limit or specific limit, for example, you can, you have to withdraw the patient. If the patient uh, concurrent admission to the IR, so he has to, uh, to withdraw. So this is for your team, to mention the team and even for you, what are the criteria that you have to withdraw the patient uh, from the study. Follow-up procedure, if necessary, because of adverse event, for example, if your study related for the safety and you have to follow the adverse event of special medication, so minimum, like, you have to have, like, an, a one or two years follow-up, so you have to mention what are the follow-up procedure and how long the patient will come to see the patient, so, sorry, the physician, and what type of data you will be collected from the patient, you know. Either it's detailed of the study visit schedule, type of laboratory, radiology, questionnaire, if any required in each study visit, and through the study duration. Further subject, also for the follow-up procedure you have to mention here, where and for what, especially for adverse event, how often, what data is collected at each time point. Um, just to know, uh, even this is the protocol, at the end it's something like organized for your, pro for your you know, thought, and how you conduct the study. So you will know like the, the best time that to do this study map at the table. So by table, just like with visit one, what are the type of information you will collect it. Visit two, what are the type of information you needed and so on. Because it's not necessary uh, the lab test you have to, to withdraw from each visit. Uh, if the visit of the patient, you will see it in every month. So maybe in every month you will withdraw a blood. But every for two weeks, you, you will not. And so on the the X-ray or the CT scan. Maybe it's not. It will be every two months. It will be every three months. So you have to know what are the criteria or what are the data and the procedure. And even this is uh, will be added in the consent form to the patient because the patient when he read the consent form he have, it's uh, his um, you know it's uh, right to know what the procedure that he will expect from enrolling in this study. 
this is like what I would say the working plan so here like in the screening baseline so you have to take the conference sentiment form you have to check the inclusion exclusion take the demographic medical history physical examination pregnancy test lab adverse event survival it's not applicable here in the treatment period timing which is will be every four weeks so only you will get the physical examination and the adverse assess, event assessment end of study you will go the physical the lab the adverse event and survival this is simply but for advanced trial it will be more detailed statistical analysis usually this is the statistician will help you uh, state the statistical method to be used state required number of subject detail on how the primary and secondary outcome will be analyzed data management data collection tool the case report form what you have to show it either in excel or in paper format what data are you going to collect how is it be collected who will collect it and when for example clinical research coordinator if there is any assistant any physician assistant where and how is data going to be stored this is very important because you have to show the irb that you maintain the confidentiality and uh, of the patient uh, as the ethical guideline the database from which database you will get the the, the, the data the privacy and content, uh, confidentiality of the patient it's related for the consent form you have to, to 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 show in the protocol or attach in the protocol the consent form and usually it either to be like bilingual uh, the, the the language the mother language of the country and other language that it be can uh, used in in this country uh, for example in the middle east you have to put it in arabic and you have to put it in english because it encounter some patient are like english native so we have to be prepared and and put the two language possible precaution taken to ensure the safety of the subject so any things related to ethical issue you have to mention here in this part financing and insurance if financial support is required detailed budget should be provided if for example the sponsor is the one who will provide you with the medication throughout the study so you have to tell them uh, to provide them like a budget of how much the sponsor will 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 uh, pay for uh, this study during your during your study period explain requirement for personal time required some physician for example ask for a uh, part-time uh, clinical research coordinator so you have to mention this that you need financial or you will bring um, a coordinator and will you will pay for her for example uh, one thousand dollar uh, each month and so on state whatever facilities are required whatever you need a refrigerator you need any any type of um, you know for example um, what we can say like um, any extra machine ECG or uh, be used in the specific based on your specific objective you have to mention here uh, why you request such um, uh, um, facility from the sponsor or from other uh, agent study agreement insurance this is to be presented to the IRB in separate document any any agreement between you and the sponsor or between any party you have to to show it to the IRB you cannot hide it from them you have to show that you are uh, 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 open and uh, you are uh, they are aware about you all uh, fees or payment that will be paid uh, to the study team during the trial Responses. List all of the responses used in the background section and at the end of the protocol when you write your literature review you have to mention what are the literature or the references being used appendices if needed for example any guideline any the you know any checklist used if you use the quality of life questionnaire you have to attach it here so at the end you are the investigator so you are the one who are committed to conduct of the study in accordance with the study protocol and good clinical practice any like any word you wrote it here as investigator in the protocol you have to commit yourself that you will uh, uh, follow it you know and even your study team they have the commitment to follow whatever it's been written as the study protocol I'm sorry, but some people, like I know one of the experts told me that I deal with the protocol as my Bible. 
because I have to follow what's written by word. If there is any deviation or violation from that, what is written, it will be like a mark on your practice and it can be like a malpractice at the end. So this I need to, to differentiate, differentiate between two term amendment and deviation. Amendment is a change in protocol procedure. For example, you wrote in the beginning of when you write protocol that you have to withdraw blood at visit 1 and visit 12. And then you change it that you will need to withdraw blood for every three months. So most amendments, except minor, need IRB approval prior to implementation. So once you change it, you have to submit this new protocol version to IRB. Wait the IRB until it approves it. For example, even if it takes long time, like more than a week or like a month, you have to wait it until they approve it and then you will change it. You cannot during the IRB review uh, period uh, withdraw a blood uh, from any patient after they approve it you can withdraw as stated for that I told we told also the investigator to write uh, to make sure that everything being written because the amendment and uh, the change it takes time when being reviewed from the IRB deviation it's failure to do protocol procedure all deviation even minor must be reported to the sponsor as it's affect the data for example, you did not withdraw blood at visit 3. The sponsor will come to you and even the IRB, if there is an audit, they will come to you and ask why this action happened, why you did not document it, uh, why the patient, for example, did not come on that visit and so on. So document everything. Documentation is whatever you will save your life and save your practice during your research. Have to recap. Don't start a study protocol without IRB approval. Don't consent subject before IRB approval. Don't continue a study without IRB approval. As, as I told you, it will last only for one year, maybe less or more. Subject enrolled while study is not approved are invalid. Their data cannot be used. Do not change the protocol without IRB approval. Do not perform protocol procedure on a subject until they have signed an in consent form. Sponsor and IRB can have direct access to subject information provided it's kept confidential. As you said, all of these, it's just like to maintain the right and safety and the welfare of the patient and to secure your practice and ensure that you are uh, follow the protocol uh, as being stated, as it's being uh, re uh, written in the good clinical practice. This is the end of my lecture. Hope it's clear now and I hope I make it as easy as you can and I'm ready for any question. Thank you very much.